If I might have everyone's attention for one moment. Let us pray. It does work. It works. Um, in the spirit of the new Avengers movie, which I haven't seen, so no spoilers. Um, in the spirit of the Avengers movie, we know that out there in this world, um, some of the truest uh, heroes in our lives are moms and mom figures. So today, in the spirit of the Avengers, uh, we have the epic Mother's Day trailer video as our get ready for worship moment. This ring. Only one hero can save her family. To our moms, our mom figures, our aunts, our grandmas, our women teachers, all those moms in our lives that have brought us to this point, we are grateful and we are here in worship. Uh, if you haven't already done so, would you take a moment? There's red friendship pads in those pews somewhere and sign your name to those and pass those on down the road then pass them back from where they began. Make note of those worshiping around you because we are going to uh, be greeting folks later in the service and it might be nice to, to know some names and to go with the faces around us. While you do that, I have some information for us this morning. I uh, want to... Uh, a little bit later in the service, we'll be uh, welcoming some confirmands. Uh, their names are listed in your information sheet. Going on right now, downstairs in the McCaskill room, uh, from 9.30 to 10.30 is our adult Sunday school. We have a guest speaker there, Min Fuang Tanner. Um, has a great story. Uh, it should be a wonderful class. So if you wanted to go to that and forgot that that was today, feel free to just kind of get up, excuse yourself through those doors, and just go downstairs into the McCaskill room and hear Min's story. We have an exploring membership class coming up on May the 19th, next Sunday, information about how to sign up for that. We have a work day. Please note the date coming up, June the 8th, and how to be a part of that. Out in the fellowship hall, uh, as you greet one another later today, there are updated phone uh, church directories out there. Please go out there and grab one of those. Place it uh, next to your phone at home. That way you can program my home phone number into that, and then you'll know who to block when the phone call comes in. All right? Uh, so uh, those are out there in the fellowship hall um, then. Uh, I don't think I have any more announcements right now, but I do... Uh, we have a lot of uh, seniors that are getting ready to graduate and move into the next phase of life. So if we have any of those 12th graders uh, or, or those folks who are graduating, if you would come down front and take up residence down front and face the congregation at this point, that'd be great. You may have seen some of their faces and photos circulating before the service on the screen, and we'll get those up after the service. So, uh, those who are graduating, come on down front now and, uh, and face the congregation.
is the first of many photos that they're going to make you get in line for, so just make sure everyone can be seen. Kind of what they get used to this. If you can't see the camera, the camera can't see you, so make sure you're standing where you can see the camera. Um, so you all are getting ready to move into the next phase of life, and I believe uh, their names and what their plans, if we knew their plans at the time of printing, are on the yellow information sheet that you got when you came in. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to share the microphone, but I'm just going to ask you to go down the row and shout your name out real loud so people know who you are. So we'll start right here. I'm Matthew Morrison. Alyssa Morrison. Daniel Brown. Wade Brown. Alex Hager. Chris <laughs> Hernandez. Jalen Stabler. Emma Sanders. Maria Cucci-Daniel. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> you look back to me. You look back. Jake right out. Uh, and then the, there's other names there in the bulletin. So um, it, it is graduation season. And so you go out into the Hallmark store and you get the cards. One of you is going to get this card. I'm not saying which one it is, but one of you might get this card. But this is the one I found. Uh, this is a big achievement. Blah, 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 blah. Whole future ahead of you. Blah, 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 blah. Made us proud. Blah, 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 blah. And then inside it said, here's some money in big, bold print. Um, here's the thing. We hope that we have not been a part of the blah, 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 blah in your life. Because you have definitely not been the blah, blah, blah in our lives. You have been a vital part of who we are as a church family. We've seen you in worship, we've seen you in Sunday school, we've seen you in youth gatherings, we've seen you on mission trips, we've seen you, uh, some of you got baptized in front of this congregation, some of you were con confirmed in front of this congregation. Uh, we've been praying for you. We've been holding you close to our hearts and, and being there for you. So we want you to know that long after you leave here, you'll still be covered in prayer. So in just a moment, I'm gonna pray for you, and then you're welcome to take a blanket uh, to remind you that you're still covered in prayer after you leave here. Uh, we are excited that you are graduating. We're excited that you're moving into the next phase of your life, um, but we're also a little sad. So we need to tell you we love you, we'll miss you, uh, and we are always praying for you. And when you're back in town, or through the area, don't forget to stop in and say hi. Uh, so let me pray for you all now. Ever loving and ever giving God, we are grateful for these graduates, uh, for the next phase of their life, uh, for who they are and who they will become, uh, and for the faith that you have planted deep within them and the faith they share with us. Lord, continue to bless and guide them and guard them in their future endeavors. All this we ask and all this we pray in Jesus' sustaining and life-giving name. Amen. We love you. So you all can grab a blanket and head back to, uh, to your pew. And then uh, we have a uh, call to worship. I'm not sure if there's a call to worship slide or not. There is. Is it, is it after the, uh, the, the candle slide? All right. So we'll do the candle slide. All right. We're just going to call ourselves to worship. Say, say, I call you to worship, Alex. I call you to worship. All right. Now have a seat. I think we're going to stand and praise God in song now. Great job.
Please have a seat. And I invite Amelia Louise Krismer to come up front. Bring your mom and dad with you. Drew Stone, come on down. The kids can leave for Sunday school if they'd like to. Hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the close of the age. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus, ensure of his presence with us, we baptize those whom he has called to be his own. In Jesus Christ, God has promised to forgive our sins and has joined us together in the family of faith, which is his church. He has delivered us from darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. In Jesus Christ, God has promised to be our father and to welcome us as brothers and sisters of Christ. Amelia, know that the promises of God are for you. By baptism, God puts the divine sign on you to show that you belong to God and gives you the Holy Spirit as a guarantee that sharing Christ's reconciling work, you will also share his victory, that dying with Christ to sin, you will be raised with him to new life. Mandy and Jared, in presenting Olivia, Amelia. Okay, you need to hear the story on this, right? Um, <laughs> So the last child we baptized was Olivia. I had said Olivia in all of the points of the baptism service, but what I typed in my notes was Amelia. So I, either I'm prophetic because now this child is here before they knew this child was coming and named Amelia, or I'm just getting confused. All right, we have Amelia up here now, right? All right. In presenting Amelia for baptism, you announce your faith in Jesus Christ and show that you want her to study Christ, to know Christ, to love Christ, and to serve Christ as Christ's chosen disciple. Show your purpose by answering these questions. First, who is your Lord and Savior? Do you, do you trust in him? Do you renounce evil and rely upon God's grace for your child's salvation as you do for your own? Do you? Do you intend your child to be his disciple, to obey his word, and to show his love? Do you? And will you be a faithful member of this congregation, giving of yourself in every way? And will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be? Will you? And now one of our elders has a question for the congregation and a prayer for this child. Our Lord Jesus Christ commanded us to teach those who were baptized. Do you, the people of the church, promise to tell this new disciple, Amelia, the good news of the gospel, to help her know that all that Christ commands, and by your fellowship to strengthen her family ties with the household of God, to the end that she may confess Christ as her Lord and Savior, and come at last to God's eternal kingdom? Do you? Yeah. Let us pray. God, parent to us all, we thank you for your faithfulness promised in this sacrament and for the hope we have in your son Jesus. As we baptize with water, baptize us with your Holy Spirit so that what we say may be your word and what we do may be your work. By your power, may we be made one with Christ our Lord in common faith and purpose. Amen. <laughs> What is the name of this child? Amelia. Amelia Louise Krismer. 
I baptize you and the water's warm, just so you know, it's gonna be cool, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You are a child of the covenant. <gasps> there was a smile right there. <laughs> you see all these folks out here? They see you and they made a promise. They're gonna be praying for you and they're gonna be loving you and they're gonna be caring for you and they're gonna be praying for your mom and dad as well. They're gonna be praying for your whole family because you are a child of God. What an appropriate song we sang just before this time. And one day you're gonna stand up here and you're gonna make those promises for yourself because you are a child of the covenant. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you so much for this wonderful child. We thank you for her family. We thank you for your grace and your love and ask that you continue to hold her and sustain her and the whole family in their days forward. That one day she will come at last to the time when she will make this public profession for herself. All this we ask and all this we pray in your holy name, in Jesus' name, amen. And the, kid, the kids have already gone to Children's Church, right? Some have. If there are any other children that need to head out to uh, Sunday school, you may do so at this time. The rest of us, let's stand and take a moment to greet the people around us. At this time, I invite uh, those members of our confirmation commissioning class who are being welcomed into membership at this service to please come down front. So that is Braden Unger and Emma Strasner. We have Braden and Emma. Braden and Emma are here today as part of our confirmation commissioning class. Uh, they met with other students and a few of those other students will be uh, meeting with the session at a later date. 
uh, and then we'll bring them in front of the congregation at some point in the future. Uh, this class met for a good three months to discuss uh, different topics of faith, and then at the end of that time, they presented a written statement of faith to the session. A and they read these statements of faith, and then they answered questions about their statements of faith, and then they were voted into membership in the church. Um, the thing to remember is, what we just did with Amelia earlier at that baptismal font, what many of you have done with your children at that baptismal font is what's the culmination with today. And so I need moms and dads, I need parents of these two to stand where you are. They made a promise on their children's behalf many, many years ago. They said, we're going to do what we have to do to get them involved in the church so that at one point in time, they'll make their own public profession of faith. The questions they answered on behalf of these two around a baptismal font somewhere are the questions these two will now answer for themselves. Their faith started on the faith of their families. And we're grateful to you all for that. They're great kids. You already knew that. Please be seated. And so to that end, I need to ask the two of you some questions. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ. Do you trust in him? Do you intend to be his disciple, his faithful follower, to obey his word and to show his love? Do you? I do. And will you be a faithful member of this congregation, giving of yourself in every way? And will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be? Will you? And now Pastor Dave has a prayer for you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you this day for Emma and Braden. We thank you for their parents who took vows to raise them in the faith and for church members who took vows to help them do it. We know that you have had your eye on them since before they were born, and you have watered and tended the seeds planted by their parents, other family, friends, and church members. We are grateful that the day has arrived for them to publicly acknowledge their faith as their own. But we know that their story with you has not ended. In fact, it's about to begin in new ways as they now take up your call to serve others in the church and in the world. Guide them as they seek to live out their faith in school and in the community and at home. Give them wisdom and courage to make the right decisions when they're tempted to do the wrong thing, and fill them with your joy and love as they follow you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hear these words from John 15, verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Go and do likewise. Take your light of faith, a light lit so many years ago at your baptism on the faith of your parents and carry that light forward on your own with God's help so that others will see your good works and give honor to God in heaven. In the words of 1 Corinthians 16, seek to live these words out. Go forth into the world as witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Keep alert, stand firm in your faith, be courageous, be strong, let all that you do be done in love. You are full-fledged members. Carries more responsibility with it than just checking the box, member. But that's, that's what they always want to be able to do. So maybe we should pass the registration pads now, the, the, attend, the friendship pads now. Welcome to this family of faith. We are glad to have you aboard. Do me a favor. Don't forget to send me a photo that we can get it out there on the welcome board. To the congregation, make a point of seeking them out following the service to congratulate them and welcome them into the family of faith. Welcome. Before Will offers our uh, morning prayer into the Lord's Prayer, 
Uh, just want to uh, two prayer requests uh, for this day and for this week. Prayers for Pat Campbell. Pat is having surgery tomorrow. And is it, it's hip, correct? A hip surgery tomorrow, yes. And Lois Greger is having surgery on Thursday, back surgery, correct? Yeah, so Lois Greger having back surgery on Thursday. Uh, so prayers for Pat Campbell and Lois Greger both having surgeries this coming week. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, our one true protector, we pray for those in need, for those who are suffering and need help, I pray for our country and for you to protect us in times of need. I pray to you for our community and protect us from the storms and the torrential rain that we have been hit with. I pray for those who don't have a place to go in the harsh weather. Lord, help us with everything you do and thank you for everything you do. Now join us together in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before our senior reflections blaze, I'm going to call you up. You've got two scriptures you want to read for us. And then you all decide if you want to go in the same order or mix it up. All righty. The first scripture we have selected for today is Hebrews 11.6. And without faith... It is impossible to please God, for whoever would approach him must believe he rewards those who seek him. Second is Psalms 23, 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Amen. Good morning. Um, before I get started, I had a few announcements to make from my fellow speakers. First of all, just from me, baby Amelia and her parents, just because he remembered your name today doesn't mean he will 17 years later. But you do get, pay you get paid for it out of guilt. Um, second of all, we just let you know that the first of these um, talks was finished at 2.30 in the morning last night. And I'm very proud to say that for once in my life, I finished something before day lit. So it's a big accomplishment. So to get started. I'm Tessa, by the way. And I finished it before day lit. <laughs> um, <okay. laughs> so my upbringing in faith has been interesting, to say the least. I can easily start this talk with a common anecdote about how some of my first memories are at this church. I remember the Sunday school classes, the weeks of vacation Bible school, and all the time at youth group. Mostly that last one. Both my parents volunteered at youth group, and I always remember being the youngest kid there, and I absolutely loved every minute. During this period of time, I was also going to Catholic school, and I just remember having a lot of different ideas about faith taught to me. I was really lucky to have parents who allowed me to just kind of forge my own path in my faith which was really cool, but for a while, I just kind of existed. I went to church, I went to school, I listened to the things that were taught to me, but I really didn't take the time to formulate an opinion on any of them, which in retrospect was probably going to be decidedly difficult for an eight-year-old, but I continued on this pattern through about fifth grade, and that's when the big thing happened. We only have three minutes, so I won't get into it, but a lot of you may know my life got a little crazy at that time. Life got crazy, life got messy, and it was just kind of a lot for a while. Due to the circumstances, I no longer attended church, I became more apathetic about my faith, and my relationship with God became close to non-existent. 
I wasn't really angry with God, and I still believed he was there, but I just really wasn't exactly interested in a relationship with him. I threw myself into school. I focused on volleyball, and I tried to foster deeper relationships with all my friends just to try to fill that void. And it worked for a while on the surface, but deep down, I was really struggling with my mental health. And everything built up and built up, and then it happened. After all the terrible things that had happened in my life, the most terrible thing that could have happened happened. I was dumped. Feel free to laugh, because in retrospect, it was really insignificant. But a lot of the things that I had been trying to fill that void with just really started to slip away, and I felt very empty. So on a whim, I texted one of my lifelong best friends, and I asked her to bring me to church one day. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, sitting in church, I felt really comfortable. I just felt like I was at home. And I felt really calm. And I'm not trying to say that Church and prayer are the only thing that would be able to help a serious mental health issue, but it definitely helps having that support system. Sorry. Being part of a church family has provided me with that support system and a way to move closer to God. And I've met some of the best people in my time. Sorry. I love you, Maria. <laughs> See, I don't cry a lot, but Maria has a way of making me cry no matter what. I've met some of the best people I've ever met and some of my closest friends. And I'm still not entirely sure where my faith journey is going. But GPC is providing me with a loving environment to explore all my options, and I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you to Lou and to Miss Libby and to Dave and to Bonnie and to Kyle. And I just love all of you a lot. Thanks. The speech that finished at 2.30 last night was mine. <laughs> I beat both of them. I want to start this by thanking everyone that has gotten me to this point, all my youth leaders, like Lou, Kyle, Libby, Phyllis, uh, Miss Amy. Uh, I could not have gotten to this point without all of you guys. Uh, my journey here at GPC started back in kindergarten when my family decided to switch from a Baptist church to this one. My five-year-old brain at the time, unknowing of just how important this change would be to my life. Uh, for beginners, I made so many memories here that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. There are the memories of Kids Club with Pam uh, and the annual Christmas fair where I tried to come home with as many goldfish as I possibly could. <laughs> There's the youth group and the lock-ins we had where I got zero hours of sleep. After that comes middle school, Sunday school, where I would look forward to it because there would always be a big box of donuts and uh, learning about God, too. Along with that comes midship and the bonfires at Libby's house, the 30-hour famines, in Sunday school every week. Then high school, and with high school came work camp and Lou. Uh, after that came pickup basketball games and fellowship hall and youth group. Another thing that I will carry with me for the rest of my life is the lasting friendships that I've made. Uh, between church, Sunday school, and youth group, I've made friends with people that I never thought I would be friends with. These are the type of friends where if I need anything, I know I can count on them to come through for me. The type of friends where we support each other no matter what the circumstances are. The type of friends where I consider them to be more of a family than a group of friends. The type of friends where if you leave them at Bojangle, no one will notice them until they call you and you look up and see them standing on the hill waving. That's an inside joke from work camp. <laughs> Lastly, most importantly, there are several things I've learned that I will be able to carry with me for the rest of my life. And the first is that you cannot be perfect. There is no way to be perfect, and God knows this and understands this, yet he accepts you for who you are. And besides that, I also learned that God forgives unconditionally. Uh, with these lessons, I will have built a good foundation for my church and faith, 
and I hope to carry that with me through the rest of my life. And as I move on from this church and into my life, I hope to be able to find that into another church that's just as good a sense of community and importance that this one has to me. Good morning. They weren't lying. I was the last one to get it done. Added the final touches at 8.15. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dalen Stabler. Don and Holly are my parents, and if you don't know them, you probably know my grandparents, Art and Helen. I've grown up in this church since birth, baptized, confirmed here, and I'm thankful every day for that opportunity. Looking back on my years at GPC, I have many, many fond memories that unfortunately I can't squeeze into three minutes, but here goes nothing. I remember the first time I prayed on my own, not the blessings for meals or the now I lay me down to sleep before bed, but the first time I spoke to God and made up my own words. I was four and I sat at the top of my steps in my house in a timeout. I distinctly remember thinking, well, let's give this God thing a try. So I closed my eyes and I prayed aloud, Dear God, please help my parents to understand me. <laughs> Little did I know that one, my mom heard it, two, this was the start of, this was the very beginning of my journey with God. Just about every Sunday for the past 18 years, you could find me at 9.30 in one of the Sunday school rooms, and then at 11, sitting in the service, right hand side, sixth pew from the back, that's our pew, Nobody takes our pew. I'm expecting a plaque like the Lincoln pew to be put back there saying Stabler pew. As a youngster, I remember Sunday school with Mrs. Cook, Miss Marion, and Barb, where I always seemed to be outnumbered by the boys at least three to one. But don't worry, because even in heels and a dress, I was always holding my own playing basketball. Right, Mr. Bridell? <laughs> I also remember Children's Church with Miss Phyllis, VBS, and many, many weeks, of, or many, many nights of Christmas fairs. For many years, my faith was nurtured during those select times of the week. Being from New Oxford, it wasn't always convenient to be a part of other things like kids club or midship, so I never really did, until Miss Libby's persistent invitations convinced me to come to a couple nights of midship. It was so different, and I remember being quite nervous. I wasn't dressed in church clothes like normal. We didn't have the Bible out most of the time. We just came, ate, played, and talked. When ninth grade rolled around, I decided to make ship more of a priority, and I'm so glad that I did. Some of my best friendships and learning experiences have taken place at ship, including what I feel was the time when I was closest to God. It was during my first trip to Prairie Grove, Arkansas, to work camp. On the way there, it poured. Didn't rain the entire week we were there doing our work, and then when we were leaving on Saturday, it proceeded to pour again, this time with a visible rainbow. I remember sitting in the van as Ken Elledge pulled our attention to it and just said, that's God's promise. In that moment, I felt God's presence in a way that told me that the week we spent together was sharing God's light to a small town. And now we were returning to the dark rest of the world, and we needed to bring God, God's light with us. But the rainbow was God's promise that we were going, that he was going to be with us, going to be with us through it all. It was activities with SHIP, and especially work camp, that took church out of this building, allowing me to see the bigger picture, and taught me that being a Christian is the way I live and interact with others. Lou reminds us constantly that we need to be the people that when we meet someone, they may be the only Bible they ever meet. So we need to leave a good impression. Thank you to my friends and everyone here who has supported me and been my extended family. Thank you to my grandma for the, being the one who constantly reminds me to pray when things get difficult, even when I sometimes forget. And thank you, Lou, for always being there. And despite the fact that I ignored your plea and I'm not going to seminary in the fall, I will continue to look for support in a church family wherever I go. Thank you.
invite our ushers to come forward that are taking the offering this morning to come on down. Uh, we give to God because God has first given to us. We give to God with gratitude.
please join me in a litany of faith and trust. Jesus, you are our example of trust in the Father. Help us to grow in faith and trust in you, O Lord. Jesus, you are our guide as we weather the storms of life. Help us to grow in faith and trust in you, O Lord. Jesus, you are the Son of God and Savior of the world. Help us to grow in faith and trust in you, O Lord. Jesus, lead us to trust in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Help us to believe always in God's love and care. Help us to grow in faith and trust in you, O Lord. Amen. Let's all stand and sing the last song together.
following the benediction and the closing song, uh, greet the youth. Uh, they'll be out in Fellowship Hall. Go out there and mingle. Have fellowship with one another. Uh, extend the right hand of fellowship to them. For the youth that are participating in the 11 o'clock service, you got 10 minutes, then I need you back in here. <laughs> All right? Um, but go from this place. Go from this place remembering that claim that we are all children of God. And that we go from here knowing the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. World without end, alleluia and amen. Go and be God's people. Have a great week. <laughs>